because this is one of the most requested chairs we have been asked to review, it deserves more than just a rushed review based on a single month's experience. In this video, I give you my final thoughts on the Siho M57, how it compares to a gaming chair, how it compares to a mesh chair within the same price range, and how it compares to a 80,000 peso chair. I'm Rafael from Hardware Sugar, and this is the ultimate review of the Siho M57 after three months of use. What's up, Internet? Mahira pa rin makakuha ng PC parts ngayon, but that doesn't mean you can't get this shirt to remind you of what you still need. Jokes aside, na totoo naman, we made our very first merch to not only reflect our passion for PC building, but to help you teach your friends what you know through the Hardware Sugar PC Anatomy shirt. To order, go to our site or click on the link in the video description. Hover over products and select t-shirts. We have three designs and they come in sizes ranging from small to XL. Press add to cart, select your delivery option and your payment terms. When we last talked about the CUM57, we had just finished putting it together and talked about my first impressions of it. You can check that video out here above. Something which I highly recommend because you can get to see the ease of assembly and the quality of the parts up close before they get hidden away from the chair when it's fully assembled. During those three months of testing the M57, I switched back to my Herman Miller Aeron chair once a week. A good way of knowing what impacts comfort for you is when you take notice of what part of your body reacts differently to a chair change. Before we go any further, I want to give a special shout out to TW for sending us a CU M57 for review and for correcting us that the squeak seen in our original video was because of improper assembly on my part. I forgot to put the washers. My bad, everyone. I can happily verify that there is no squeaking sound whatsoever when I sit on it now. No more sound. This video is not sponsored by TW in any way. However, numerous subscribers to our channel have voiced out support for TW's customer service, something which is important to emphasize in this day and age of online shopping, just in case something goes missing or needs fixing. Let's talk design. In terms of build quality, the M57 looks and feels as premium as it does based on the pictures and videos I've seen of it online. It's able to achieve this through three subtle design elements, which are the choice of metal on plastic, finish and quality of the plastic itself, and design quality of the mesh. First, the dash of metal invokes a sense of strength and quality. As I was assembling the chair, the bars were quite heavy for a small piece of metal, and you could probably kill someone with this if you used it as a weapon in the proper way. Hints of metal remain on other parts of the chair, as well such as the lumbar support dial, thus creating a sense of design continuity. Metal is a good way of making a product appear more expensive than it actually is, and mere hints of it is enough to give off that appeal. This is unlike most gaming chairs, which more or less stick to the static plastic. Second, the finish of the plastic is both smooth to the touch and has a clean matted finish. Cheaper or poorly made chairs often have these splinter imperfections which stick out. This is not the case for the M57. While a good part of the base of the chair is made of plastic, it is not something which makes it cheap looking. Looking at the M57 from afar and upon touch, the plastic finish is subdued and minimalist, especially if you get the white version we have. For around the same price, my favorite budget office chair, the Ergodynamic, a review of which I'll link above, is definitely made of less premium plastic material compared to that of the M57. Even when the Ergodynamic was new, it never felt this nice and smooth. Third, the mesh is both bouncy and sturdy. This is the ideal flexibility you want in a mesh chair seat, primarily because your seat will last longer, similar to how buildings are made to withstand earthquakes by making the buildings move alongside it. Or in this case, your mesh moving alongside the weight of your butt when you sit on it. One of the biggest misconceptions people have with mesh chairs is that they instantly think that the mesh means you'll be sitting on a fishing net. This isn't true. The quality of mesh varies from chair to chair. Even the assembly of how the mesh is assembled varies. You won't find staples keeping the M57 together unlike the Ethan chair I reviewed. This stitch is professionally done and is actually a little more sturdy than I want it to be. Also, see who gets extra points for creating a modern art skin embedded onto the mesh itself. This is something which most reviewers of the chair have left out completely, mostly because it adds a nice yet subtle touch, which most won't even notice unless they're a chair freak like me. Mesh chairs also provide a lot of natural ventilation. All those little gap 
socks you see are air pockets which keep your butt and back cool all day long. It is quite an experience to feel the flowing of air when you leave an electric fan on pointed at you. I am a big advocate of mesh chairs over leatherette simply because leatherette is ultimately self-defeating. Leatherette peels after a year or so because of oil secreted from your body. But because the material itself is not breathable, it actually encourages you to sweat and produce the very oil which begins the rupturing process. In short, if you're looking for a long-lasting and comfortable chair, go with mesh, fabric, or a combination of both. The ergonomic is an example of a combination of both. The M57 is also a lot easier to keep clean because if you spill a drink, most of that goes through the gaps. And if you're worried about crumbs, wiping them off from the top will allow the rest to fall between the gaps as well. All right, moving on to ergonomics and comfort. The M57 offers all the correct adjustable parts. So yes, the arms go up and down, move from side to side. There's a headdress which goes up and down and can be tilted to several angles. The chair's height can be adjusted. You can recline the chair and lock the tilt function in place. There's also a lumbar support. And these are all good things to have and you should be concerned if your current chair doesn't offer them. Unfortunately, while a chair might appear to have what you need, that doesn't mean they were designed correctly. The headrest has been the most difficult of all the pieces to pin down. Sometimes I look for it and sometimes I frustratingly remove it altogether. After I find a comfortable position I like, I end up changing my mind later on when I come back. And so I have went through a lot of wasted time so far adjusting and readjusting the headrest over and over. I thought that I would be able to find my ideal position after three months of use. However, I never really did. It is fortunate the chair looks nice even without it on, and so if you encounter the same issues I did, just decapitate it. Reclining with a headdress and putting my feet up is one of the most blissful experiences I encountered with the ergodynamic. While the M57 does recline, it does not recline as far back as I wanted to. My ergodynamic, while it being 8 years old, still maintains fantastic build structure, and I never thought the back would snap off. The M57's recline is good, but not amazing. If it recline just a few more degrees then I would probably recommend this chair over the ergodynamic. Right now, however, that isn't the case. You can adjust how much effort you need to push back in order to recline and also lock the recline in place. Both are good features, however, I really wish it reclined a little bit further back. The lumbar support is hidden away, thus not disrupting the minimalist aesthetic. Unlike the very obvious gamer chair pillows which I have always found awkward to look at, lumbar support is very important. And just because your chair claims to have one, that doesn't mean that it actually does any supporting. With the Ethan chair for instance, it being a lot cheaper than the N57 is in in my opinion, unusable precisely because of the lumbar support which was a big ass claw that dug into my back. The tension of the M57 lumbar support is also adjustable through a metal dial in the back which as I mentioned earlier adds positively to the overall aesthetics. My biggest problem with the M57 is the cushioning for the armrests. After a couple of hours my elbows definitely felt pain while gaming. My solution was to rest my arms on the tabletop itself. Now I don't think this would be a problem if my desk and the M57 were ergonomically compatible. Armrests and the tables should always be leveled with each other, something which my ergodynamic taught me for years. My table is on the taller side and so this is more my mistake than that of Sihu. However, if you have a similar desk problem in which your elbows carry the bulk of the support, then beware that this plastic rest is unforgiving. In general, this plastic support is definitely on the harder side and I would have preferred they went with the black padding of the latest ergodynamic, a padding of which seems identical to that of my my Aeron chair, so I don't think it's overall that expensive to add. The M57 allows Indian sitting, single leg sitting, and cross leg sitting. If you listen to most ergonomic guides, however, these should never be done and you should always have your feet firmly on the ground. If you can't reach the floor, then get a footrest, which I did. Nevertheless, we are all guilty of cheating and insisting that for that moment, you want to sit in a certain way, which this chair allows you to because the seat itself is quite wide. I did not think that the mesh was sharp enough to dig into my skin, but others might feel that it does. I did not use the wheels which came with the M57. Instead, I bought these affordable rollerblade casters which protects any kind of flooring you have, whether that is wood, carpet, and so forth. 
and it greatly improves the rolling functionality of your chair. It's essentially the equivalent of chair ice skating without the ice. If you aren't looking to invest in a new chair, please do yourself a favor and pick these up. They are less than a thousand pesos and they are compatible with pretty much any office or gaming chair. TW today retails this specific model of the C157 for 9,500 pesos. There is a slightly more expensive version of this with a leg rest. However, I find chairs with these to be strange looking and would advise you to just go with this one instead simply because I think nothing beats a good feet on table recline. While this might not be an extremely budget priced, after owning a similarly priced chair for eight whole years without a problem, a good chair pays for itself. I bought my Herman Miller Aeron for 60,000 pesos, which is already a large discount from the original price of 80,000. And what I learned is that there is only so much additional comfort an expensive chair can provide for you. Yes, the Aeron is hands down the more comfortable chair. However, the comfort level isn't galaxies apart. I am very picky with chairs, and if I were to rate the comfort of this M57 from 1 to 10, I'd rate it a 6.8 out of 10, while my Aeron's comfort rating is a 8.5 out of 10. In short, in terms of bang for buck and decency, I think the Sihu M57 is pretty spectacular cost-benefit-wise, and I have worked from this chair for many hours a day with no problem, other than that gaming armrest problem. Most of our viewers are from our native Philippines, and so this video is for you guys who are interested in ordering the Sihu M57 off Shopee or Lazada. However, one very important thing most local reviewers fail to mention is that the Sihu M57 is also being sold on Amazon, which while we don't order stuff from there, I have found that the reviews posted on Amazon is extremely helpful because I make a purchase on any product I see locally based on their reviews. One of my problems with my beloved ergodynamic chair is that it seems to be sold purely by only one seller in the Philippines. And other than our own video review, there are no other outside reviews to depend on. Sihu, whether you hate or love their products, has global reach. And that's a good thing because it means there are a lot of other online reviewers you can watch other than this video to help you decide if the M57 is the chair for you. You should always be concerned if you are making a purchase on a product simply because one person told you to and that includes videos from Hardware Sugar. I say safe because Sihu is a known brand and has a lot of online reviews for you to inspect after this video. It also takes off all the essential good qualities a chair should have, which is an attractive design and good and long-lasting build quality. I know I've had the chair for only three months as opposed to the ergodynamic, which I've had for eight years, but when you've sat on enough chairs as I have, you get a feel for what will last and what won't. My only big complaint is that the armrests are pretty hard, the recline doesn't go as far back as I like, and the headrest might be more comfortable if I had the option to push it back further. So which would I recommend? The Sihu M57 or the ergodynamic? It's a tough call, but the safe choice would be the Sihu M57, mostly because there are a lot more vendors for you to choose from. and a lot of other experiences you can read about with respect to this chair. The ergodynamic is sold by a supplier who was disinterested when I approached them for more details regarding the chair. In terms of overall comfort though, the ergodynamic wins by a few points. Again, the ergodynamic reclines further back, the armrests are softer, and it has literally stood the test of time of 8 years. Let me know in the comment section below if there are any lingering questions you may have regarding the M57 or the ergodynamic, and if you want a dedicated video on specific chair comparison. Comparisons. Next coming up is an Aeron chair review. Again, special thanks to TW for sending us the M57. I'll leave a link to their shop in the video description. But again, this isn't sponsored by anyone, so feel free to buy your chair from whoever you wish. Thanks and stay safe, everyone. We want to give an extremely special thanks to our top fans who helped make all of our work possible. ITX Addict, Rafael James, Ian Meru, Liam Magnae, Richard Onkinko, John Ruben Ochia, and Christian Espinosa. It's good seeing all of you so regularly during our streams. And again, thank you so much for the support.